So you've started your crypto journey, but there are still a few terms that you don't completely understand. Well, in today's video, we want to help explain proof of stake in the simplest possible way so that you'll understand it even if you're an absolute beginner. So what is staking and how can you use it to make money? Well, before we begin our deep dive, welcome to the Crypto Kings YouTube channel. On this channel, our team works tirelessly to be your one-stop shop for crypto. Feel free to subscribe to the channel and hit that notification bell because we don't want you to miss any of the great content that we have planned for you. Also, if this video is helpful to you at all, please like this video and leave a comment with what type of video you'd like to see next. All right, now let's dive into today's video. Now, before we get into the details, let's first try to wrap our heads around why staking was needed in the first place. Now, you may already know that Bitcoin and other cryptocurrencies are decentralized, which means there's no central authority involved here. You can send money in a digitized way without the involvement of a third party. Mining was initially used to manage a blockchain, which is a fancy term for a record of balances that isn't controlled by any single entity. But what is mining? Well, mining can be thought of as competition between powerful computers where they try to solve a mathematical question. The first computer to find the solution to that mathematical question gets the right to write the next page of transactions into the ledger commonly known as a block. The trick to winning this competition is to use a powerful computer. The more powerful the computer, the more guesses it can make in less time and therefore increases your chances of winning this mathematical competition. The principles of math and probability make it extremely impossible for any individual or group to establish a monopoly on updating the ledger, which is how decentralization is maintained. The technical term associated with mining is proof of work. A miner is able to prove that they have put in the effort and work if they are able to display the right result of that mathematical question. This is only possible if they have used computing power to come up with the right solution. Now, since the goal of this competition is to decide and come to an agreement as to who gets to update the ledger among a group of people who have no idea about each other or have any other foundation for working together, proof of work is referred to as consensus mechanism. While the proof of work consensus process may be a safe and secure way to manage a decentralized ledger, it's not without its flaws. The catch here is that this mechanism is very resource intensive. To come up with the right guess to the mathematical question requires a lot of power. It's not an efficient use of energy if we run all of these powerful supercomputers just to solve a math problem. To counter this problem, many alternative mechanisms have been put forward, and this is where the idea of stake comes in. Stake is a popular alternative to the proof of work consensus mechanism. But what does this mean? Well, instead of consuming computing power for solving math equations to win the competition, people will be staking actual coins. So how does someone do that? Well, you simply lock a certain amount of funds on a regular computer, but that computer does have to be connected to the network. If we speak in technical terms, your computer would be called a node and the funds that you lock are called the stake. Once you're done setting up your stake, you can then go ahead and take part in the contest that will decide who gets the right to forge the next block. One thing to keep in mind here is that stakers don't mine the blocks, they forge them. So once our stake is in place, how is the winner decided? Well, there are many factors that are taken into consideration, such as the amount of money that is being staked or the duration for which the money has been staked. Randomization is ensured so that no single individual has the monopoly on forging. Once a winner for the contest is decided, they then get to forge the next ledger of transactions and are rewarded with coins for the effort and contribution. In this video, we'll be having a look at Ethereum's proof of stake model. It's worth mentioning 
that it was only in December of 2020 when a new blockchain named Beacon Chain, which uses the proof of stake model, was adapted by Ethereum. This is known as Ethereum 2.0. This version of Ethereum runs alongside the original Ethereum blockchain, which is based purely on proof of work, known as Ethereum 1.0. You'll need to put up 32 Ether as collateral to be considered as an Ethereum 2.0 validator. This will earn you staking rewards. Now here's the catch. You cannot lock up more than 32 ETH on a single node. So if you're looking for a way to increase your rewards, you can simply do that by setting up multiple nodes with 32 ETH each. Ethereum 2.0 will be deployed in just a few years from now and merge with Ethereum 1.0 in an event which will be known as docking. After this event, Ethereum will become a purely proof of stake network. It's important to note that staking is more beneficial for long-term Ethereum holders. Only after the docking can you withdraw your stake ETH and incentives, therefore implying the usefulness of staking for long-term users. Now, this might make you wonder how much ETH is usually rewarded in Ethereum 2.0. Well, once you're considered a validator, you get to participate in forging a new block. You would get to be eligible to receive a percentage of the newly created ETH. But one thing to note here is that the number of validators on a network is inversely proportional to the reward. This means that the reward will be smaller in proportion if the network has more validators. For example, if 1 million ETH is staked, the maximum annual payout for each staker might be 18.1%, but if 3 million ETH is staked, the annual reward drops to 10.45%. Imagine you're with a bunch of friends and you have one single pizza to share. The more friends you have, the smaller each person's slice will be. The total amount of ETH awarded can also be thought of in this way. The more validators there are who want a slice of pizza, or in this case, the newly minted ETH, the smaller each slice will be. There are specific staking calculators whose main purpose is to estimate and calculate the amount of ETH you will be making when you stake a certain amount. But signing up for this business is not that easy. There are some restrictions and limitations when it comes to staking. Only about 900 new validators are permitted on board each day. This makes the waiting list quite long. But there's a long list of other obstacles that might keep people from being able to take part. You'll be needing to have a computer and 32 ETH to set up your own validator. And to make things even more sophisticated, some technical knowledge is also required to set up your validator correctly. Setting up your validator correctly is very important because you might be subject to penalties if you fail to do so. These penalties could even include something referred to as slashing. This term is used to refer to the destruction of portions of your stake as well as the expulsion from the network. If you want to save yourself from the inconvenience of establishing your own validator, you can always use the validators of certain exchanges that provide staking services. However, this makes you lose control over your coins and the control is transferred to that exchange. Well guys, that's it for today's video. If you've learned something from this video, don't forget to hit that like button. Subscribe to the Crypto Kings and don't forget to ring the notification bell. As always, if you have any concerns, questions, or ideas for our next video, please leave them in the comment section down below. Thank you so much to each and every one of you who support our channel, and we will see you again very, very soon on our next video.